Hello, my dear friends. Though it might seem like a gift that you didn't want at Christmas, today's video is about a very heated and very important topic, coal. Steam-powered attractions throughout the UK and beyond are in a bit of a crisis. There is no more coal being mined locally, and they are being forced to look elsewhere for alternatives. This is a snippet from an even longer video talking about coal, which you should check out if that's of interest. To greatly simplify things, particularly in the UK, steam railways are struggling to find coal. For the past five years, the government has committed to phase out the use of household solid fuels and coal used in electricity generation. The last power plant to use this closed down in September 2024 as part of the pledge to turn to cleaner, more renewable energy sources. Coke and anthracite is still needed in the production of steel and other specific industries. To that end, mines such as Aberpergum in Wales are still extracting high-grade anthracite, but steam coal is another matter. Fossi Fran mine closed in November 2023, the last remaining open cast mine of coal suitable for steam railways. This left the heritage industry in a tricky situation. Suddenly, there wasn't anywhere in the UK to find coal. With all preserved railways, road based vehicles, and even static ones, there isn't quite enough demand to keep a large-scale mine in operation, even though there are still hundreds of years left of coal still just sitting in the ground waiting. The alternative options are to import coal from other countries that are still mining it, such as Russia, Poland and Australia. Not only is this wasteful transportation, but doesn't prove cost-effective as only a certain amount of the coal arriving in the UK is usable for steam. The other choice is to come up with a substitute for coal. Several small firms have heard the cries from the places still requiring it, and have experimented with the creation of several types of fabricated coal. Some concoctions use olive oil husk, or material from rapeseed oil production, Others use small scraps of coal compressed into briquettes. Each approach has its own distinct results, and there isn't a standard that will work for most machines. This begs the question, what actually is the problem? Steam engines have naked flame fires, surely you could throw anything into the firebox and it would burn to create steam. Well, true. Steam engines can burn a range of different fuels, but most were designed to run on coal, and they perform very differently when they're not. Even the type of coal used will have drastically different performance effects. Take the Great Western Railway, for example. Their lines ran to the coal mines of South Wales, so naturally they designed their locos to run on what they had access to. Engineers found what worked best, was large grates for the Welsh coal to sit on, encased within a bell pair firebox. On the other hand, railways across America had access to more low-grade coal, made of smaller lumps. So they adapted their locos to make the best of it. Coals from different parts of the world have different qualities. Some emit more smoke, some create more clinker, or simply don't produce as much heat. Coke and anthracite, meanwhile, burn with such a ferocious temperature that it would melt the fire bars of many locos. There is hope yet in artificially formed coal, but ongoing trials show that they still perform differently depending on the engine and conditions. So, steam engines are fussy, essentially. The issue is more than that though, it is a case of contradictions. 
Shutting the last mine and turning to cleaner energy production is great, but it's been done with little thought for the heritage organisations that still need it. Instead, they are having to import coal from all around the world, and that is by far more polluting than getting the coal that's just down the road. Producing alternatives such as biomass and e-coal is still very expensive, and it's still such a new technique that it's a long way off from being able to be mass-produced on the scale that is actually needed. All the while, heritage groups are faced with paying over four times more for a tonne of coal compared to what they would have had to pay less than a decade ago. Consequently, many railways have had to run less often in order to maintain funds, and ticket prices have generally soared to make sure that there's enough fuel to run the trains at all. In terms of emissions, though they blast out smoke and steam in a dramatic way, the actual pollution that the heritage sector outputs per year is only a fraction of what is emitted elsewhere. A statistic that keeps in my mind is that the amount of CO2 produced by running trains on the Talislin Railway for a whole year is equivalent to one flight distance from London to California. This is an abbreviated overview of the current situation, and I recommend keeping up to date with the Heritage Rail Association as the situation is constantly changing. Throughout 2024, many railways have got by because they've bought up as much of the remaining true coal from the now shut Fossi Fran mine, but that was only a short term solution. If you want to understand the issue in more detail, Chris Eden Green has done several great videos on the coal crisis, some from even years ago when the problem was only just getting started, and I'll link those in the description. What I also recommend is supporting a heritage organisation that is struggling. Gothic Locomotive has a great list on Instagram about ongoing appeals throughout the UK, and either by supporting them online or going to visit these places in person would make a huge difference. You could go and see steam trains doing their thing as they were built to do. I think that's worth it. I'd love to know what you think of the current coal crisis, and what you think the best move in the future could be. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, it's a conversation that is crucial to heritage industries, who are now facing fewer and fewer options. If you've enjoyed this really exciting talk about coal, then perhaps you'll enjoy the rest of the Guide Rail series, as on the first Friday of every month, we explore a different topic surrounding the world's steam-powered history. If you've enjoyed it that much, then you might want to support the channel on Patreon, as you get a bunch of extra stuff as a thank you by following the link in the description. Or if you've just mildly enjoyed it, or even not enjoyed it, then perhaps consider subscribing, and maybe the next video will be better, who knows. Either way, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. The following patrons are super fantastic for supporting the channel. Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Random Thomas Fan, Dark White 73, Andrew Dyack, Reese Lee Walter, Ryan RTS, Ewan Pentland, Steam Power 4472, Jude 72, Firewind 10, Lunakers Photography, Mario Sonic 64, Elias, and Soda Fox Art.